Unless you've been living under a rock lately, you've no doubt seen that vinyl records have made a comeback. And it's not just folks my age that are on some nostalgia trip back to their childhoods that has been causing the shift to physical media. It seems music fans of all ages are catching the bug. I'm here as a vinyl lover to provide some insight into this phenomenon. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Crason and you're watching Music Mentions. If you're watching this video, you no doubt are a music fan and you probably have a subscription to a music streaming service like Spotify or Apple or Amazon or many of the others. That means you have a practically limitless selection of music that you can play anywhere in an instant. Why would you ever want to regress to an ancient physical format like vinyl. Well, it seems that more and more of you are getting into vinyl for the first time or getting back into vinyl after giving it up for many years. Today, I'm going to give you my perspective on why this may be happening and why despite the physical and financial barriers posed by stepping into the vinyl world, I think vinyl is the way to go if music is important in your life. I'll also cover some of the negatives of vinyl later in this video, as well as my own vinyl history and experience. But for now, let's start with sound quality. The debate between whether analog and digital music sounds better has been raging since the emergence of digital music playback devices back in the early 80s. When most people originally heard CDs, many of them, myself included, were just floored by the pristine sound. There were none of the pops or clicks or surface noise you often get with vinyl records. It was like a dirty car windshield that gets spotlessly cleaned and allows you to see better. CDs allowed you to see into the music better. It was truly stunning. Something akin to going from cathode ray tube televisions to HD TVs. It was that big. When analyzed on a strictly mathematical basis, CD systems reproduce music more accurately than vinyl. This is not up for debate. It's just a fact. I won't go into the details here, but CDs should sound better based on physics, the mathematical analyses of their waveforms, and how we understand our ears process sound. However, for many folks, not only does digital perfection sterilize the sound and make it come off as cold and hard-edged, but they actually like the pops, clicks, and surface noise of vinyl. There's something alluring and human about that sound, and I believe for many listeners, this is part of why they like vinyl. For example, when hip-hop or EDM artists want to inject some realness or authenticity or non-digitalness into their music, they'll often use a sample of a vinyl record that has a lot of noise. As a matter of fact, that's the whole point of this kind of sample. They never sample pristine and clean vinyl because it's the noise effect that they actually want. However, for many listeners, myself as well, those pops and crackles and surface noise distract from the overall listening experience. They temporarily pull us out of the music and prevent the total immersion we're looking for. It's not that we mind the occasional click or pop, but we don't like a steady stream of that kind of noise. What many, if not most, music fans that have never heard a good vinyl playback system using clean records believe is that you can't get rid of or minimize the noise. But this is just not true. You can get jaw-dropping, dynamic, and pristine sound out of vinyl while retaining the music's warmth and that richness that digital music struggles to achieve. Of course, this depends on many factors. How well recorded the source material is. How well you take care to not scratch your vinyl. 
how clean your records are, the quality of your turntable and cartridge, how well your cartridge and needle, or the stylus, is set up, and the quality of the rest of your playback system. But once you've heard vinyl this way, I doubt you'd describe the sound as anything other than wonderful and possibly even sublime. There's a reason that audiophiles have championed vinyl over the decades and continue to do so. While digital playback has achieved phenomenal quality gains over the decades, especially when it comes to the improved quality of digital to analog converters, otherwise known as DACs, there's still nothing that sounds better than a great vinyl system. I'm sure there, there are those of you out there that will disagree with me on that, and that's fine. Different strokes for different folks, right? But this is a hill I'm willing to die on. Obviously, vinyl is a physical format, just like CDs or cassettes. So to a certain extent, all of these formats provide a tangible and tactile experience. It's not just about touching your iPhone to listen to something through streaming. It's about holding and opening and placing and brushing and even degaussing the vinyl and placing it physically on the turntable and dropping the stylus on it. By the way, degaussing is just removing the static on a record with something like a static gun. Yes, there's certainly more time involved with vinyl, but I'd argue that this physical experience and process deepens your connection with the music. You spend more time, and therefore you're investing more in the music listening experience than you get from just touching your phone a few times. You're more focused on the music this way. The whole process around spinning records becomes a ritual of sorts. As you prepare and anticipate the music you're preparing to play, where the movements and the ritual can be a reward unto itself. Don't discount this seemingly mundane aspect of the vinyl experience. It can actually be a special thing. Also, spinning vinyl encourages you to listen to the album the way the artist intended for you to listen to it, in the correct sequence. Most artists of any value spend time carefully sequencing their releases since the sequence itself contributes to the overall experience of the album. Although you can certainly drop the stylus onto a specific track, you will find that you end up listening to at least a full album side before getting up off your chair. Getting up and changing songs randomly out of sequence is much more of a hassle with vinyl, so you inevitably end up listening to one side at a time in the correct sequence. From my perspective, this is a good thing and in alignment with the artist's intentions. Of course, we can't discuss vinyl without referring to the album art and the visual experience. I've discussed this in previous videos, but to reiterate, there's nothing that provides the same visual experience related to music listening the way that vinyl does. For one, the art is actually big enough to be viewed. You simply see way more details in vinyl art than in something like CD art. Of course, with streaming, you still have the visual experience, but not of the entire album. You just get the cover. You don't get the back cover or the gatefold or the liner notes. Also, holding the art in your hands while listening to the vinyl album is just a superior experience comparatively versus all of the other formats. Many music lovers buy albums for the covers and hang them on their walls. 50% of current vinyl purchasers don't even own a turntable. This alone should convey the value that cover art holds for many people. Also, what's better than spinning the vinyl version of the Beatles revolver, puffing on a joint, and exploring Klaus Vormann's artwork for the umpteenth time? Let's talk about collecting and collectability. People love to collect stuff, don't they? They love to go on the hunt for that elusive and rare thing so they can delight in the pride of ownership and display their finds proudly to others. Vinyl collecting can be very addictive, 
And as long as it's not negatively impacting other parts of your life, it can actually be an extremely fun and rewarding hobby. There's also the potential for your vinyl records to become more valuable with time. This holds a lot of allure for some people. Speaking for myself, I very rarely purchase a record thinking about its eventual resale value. It's predominantly about the music for me, but I would be lying if I told you that knowing that many of my records have escalated in value over time doesn't make me happy. There's a whole community around collecting vinyl, and for those that are interested, I would encourage you to check out Discogs, an online database and marketplace for used vinyl, and also visiting your local independent vinyl stores. I would strongly encourage you to start with the latter. These independent stores are usually owned and run by music and vinyl lovers and can be a wonderful source of information and rare records, not to mention community. Most cities have regular record fairs where you can buy, sell, and trade vinyl among like-minded vinyl fans. The rabbit hole is as deep as you're interested in going when it comes to vinyl collecting and the whole world that comes with that. Let's talk about how you get started in vinyl. So let's say you would like to dip your toes into vinyl for the first time or you gave up vinyl for CDs or streaming back in the day and now you want to get back in. But where do you start? First of all, just know that vinyl gear these days is better than ever. In general, the quality of the gear has gone up over the years due to advancements in design technology, materials, and engineering. The irony is that computer-aided design has made the analog listening experience much better. Specifications and tolerances have improved. We really are living in a renaissance of vinyl gear right now, as more and more companies have joined the vinyl audio industry and established audio companies renewed their focus on that vinyl sector. If you're a gearhead by nature, the vinyl world is right up your alley with so much available gear to explore, it will blow your mind. Getting into vinyl can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. If you're a Ronco set it and forget it kind of guy, you can get a turntable and a cartridge already set up for you. And even with a built-in phono preamp, a phono preamp is just something that boosts the signal before it gets amplified by your receiver or your power amp to your speakers. There are many quality turntables that fall into the set it and forget it category. Some of the most popular companies you may want to explore here are Fluence and U-Orbit. Both of these are known for their high quality and ease of setup while keeping the cost down to earth. I'd say that for most people just getting into vinyl, this would be the way to go. You're looking at maybe $300 to $400 for a good quality turntable that will last. That's like dinner for four at a fancy restaurant these days. For those of you that prefer to get your hands into it and tinker and swap components, I would su uh, suggest kind of exploring the vintage turntable market. You can find some extraordinary deals on fine gear at more than reasonable prices. If you're an audiophile and want the best build and sound quality and have the means to spend the money, there are many renowned companies like Techniques and Denon that all make great modern vinyl gear. There are also tons of smaller boutique companies that you can explore. My personal favorite happens to be VPI. It's a family-owned company based in New Jersey that's been in business for more than 40 years. I'm on my second VPI table and I couldn't be any happier with it. They're also American built and supported tables for those of you that prefer to buy American. Note that I have no financial relationship with VPI. I just happen to believe in giving a shout out to them because of my satisfaction with their products. That's really great stuff. If you're purchasing a turntable from a local retail audio store, 
they will very likely help you uh, set up and provide you more details in getting going. For you with more financial means, you can even find consultants that will visit your home and get everything professionally set up and optimized for your unique living space. With all that said, I would encourage all of you prospective vinyl newbies to spend some time doing your own research online. Read reviews, watch YouTube videos, and learn about this world at your own pace. It's always better to get more information and perspectives than to make a rash purchase on something as important and potentially as expensive as vinyl gear. Now let's focus on some negatives because like many good things in life, vinyl does have some significant downsides. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. The most obvious downside is cost. This hobby can be expensive and possibly very expensive, depending on what your goals are. Although you can get good vinyl audio gear that is relatively inexpensive, there is the matter of all the accessories as well. Things like brushes, static guns, turntable mats, tone arm lifters, record cleaning machines, record clamps, and on and on. Granted, these things aren't necessarily mandatory, but if you want to get the most out of your vinyl records and you want to preserve your vinyl and want the best listening experience, then you'll want to sincerely consider springing for accessories like these. For me, things like a brush, static gun, and a record cleaning machine are simply essential, especially the cleaning machine. It is amazing what a good one will do to dirty and mishandled records. It's an absolutely mandatory tool for those of you with any substantial type of collection. It'll get rid of the majority of pops and crackles and noise, even with new records, not just the used ones. Don't believe me? Try to find any serious vinyl person that doesn't own one. A record cleaning machine will also help to keep your records preserved over the years, sounding as good as the day you bought them and will even extend the life of your stylus. If curious, the machine that I've used for years is the Okinoki, but there are many different machines out there. There are even machines that will now clean your records with high-intensity sonic vibrations, like the machines that they use to clean jewelry. So with all of that said, I'll reiterate that you can get into the vinyl world relatively inexpensively. I would encourage anyone on the fence about stepping into vinyl land to start out with a good, inexpensive table and take it from there. Once you've lived with it for a while, you'll know if you want to spend more money on things like accessories in the future. However, one thing I would discourage you from doing is to buy a super cheap turntable like a Crossley. That's if you care about sound quality at all. Super cheap tables are cheap for a reason, and considering how much vinyl records cost themselves, it makes no sense to pinch pennies on a table when you plan on regularly buying records. Trust me on this. Speaking of the cost of vinyl records, this can also be a significant downside. New single records currently cost anywhere between $25 and $35, depending on the artist and many other factors. This can add up quickly, especially if you get bit hard by the vinyl collecting bug. If you are an audiophile that likes the best possible sonic quality, Often what are known as audiophile quality records from companies like Analog Productions or MoFi, you're going to pay even more, sometimes even over $100 for a single album. One important note on buying new vinyl that may make you feel better about it, your purchase will actually help the artist directly, whereas streaming really cheats most artists out of making money on their recorded music. Feel good that you are supporting the artist's ability to make a living by buying their vinyl. With that said, there are great sounding used records out there, usually for less cost than new ones. Vinyl is very durable and resilient, and even seemingly old, 
Scratched records can sound really, really good as long as the scratches aren't deep and you clean them when you get home. Unfortunately, with so many people recently enamored with vinyl, the prices of used records have been going up. Supply and demand at work, right? It's also a lot harder to find older, essential, and clean playing records from bands like The Who, Beatles, Zeppelin, or The Grateful Dead these days. They're still out there, but you'll have to be patient and spend more time in hunting those down. Let's talk about another downside. Vinyl requires space. Once you start accumulating records, you're going to notice that you'll need more storage space, which means adding some record racks to your listening area. For many, this isn't an issue, but if you have a small space, this is something you should seriously consider. Vinyl is also heavy. I've moved residences four times in less than four years with a collection of around a thousand records. And I'll tell you that safely moving a collection this size or even smaller is a pain in the ass. You have to pack the records into boxes, tape them up, uh, move them, unpack them, and re-rack them. It's a process that takes some time, effort, and muscle. This is food for thought for you nomads out there. One last downside I'll mention that should be obvious is that records can get scratched or damaged through mishandling. This is, after all, a physical format. Not only can the records get scratched, but God forbid you place the records on the floor and your room gets flooded with water for some reason. There are many nightmare stories out there with people losing their beloved collections through catastrophes like this. So I've gone through these downsides to make sure that you know what you're potentially getting into with vinyl. However, even with all of these negatives, I still think the payoff for music fans is much greater than the costs and the risks. If you really love music and you have the financial means and you can handle your records carefully, I really think joining the vinyl world is simply a no-brainer. It can be a real source of joy in your life and something that you can share with your friends and your family as well. As I promised earlier in this video, here's a little bit about my journey and history with vinyl. My vinyl collection started around the late 70s when I was still a kid, but I was obsessed with Led Zeppelin. The first two records I ever got was Zeppelin IV and Physical Graffiti, and yes, I still have those. As a matter of fact, I've never sold or lost any of my records over the years. They've always moved with me. I also treated my records with respect and careful handling, even as a kid. So most of my collection is still in fantastic shape. I think a lot of this was because as a kid, I barely had any money. I had to save up nickels, dimes, and quarters to buy a single album. So I naturally treated it with care as opposed to those folks with more financial means that could just buy an album on a whim. When I was a kid, I used my brother's Sony turntable and system, which at the time were really decent. I wouldn't necessarily call it an audiophile system, but it was very good compared to what a lot of my friends had at that time. I credit my brother for sparking my interest in hi-fi with his system when I was a youngster. Well, a few years passed, and during college in 1986, I bought my first CD player. I was so blown away by the clean sound and the convenience that I went all in on CDs at that point, and I stopped buying vinyl for decades. I eventually built up a CD collection numbering something around 2,000 records. Then in 2010, about 24 years later, I decided to set up an old turntable that a neighbor gave me when he was moving out and got my old vinyl out of a tucked away storage space in my house. I enjoyed it so much that I decided to buy a new project table and I started buying vinyl again and I haven't stopped since. Although I still enjoy listening to my CD collection and I also stream, 
vinyl playback for me is my preferred format at this point for all the reasons I described in the, that first part of this video. I'm really happy that I got back into the vinyl game when I did. I didn't realize how much I missed it. I'm sure I'm not the only older person out there with this experience of getting back into vinyl after giving it up for so many years. I would love to hear from those of you with similar experiences. Let me know in the comments below. I'd also like to hear from those of you that recently got into vinyl for the first time and what your experience has been like. Real world experiences are valuable to folks that may still be on the fence. So I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. Share your stories, good and bad, in the comments. Thanks everybody for watching today. As usual, I really appreciate you guys giving time to this video and to my channel. If you like what you see, please hit a like, hit the subscribe and notifications. I'm going to see you guys next time.